Hi guys, good morning. Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Elena Semenek and I'm psychologist and a life coach. And today I'm gonna talk about childhood trauma and four steps of childhood that every one of us went through and how it affected our life our adult life um, and uh, the impact that we have right now when we grew up it affected our um, relationship our um, the way we treat other people why we choose this partner or another partner uh, it affected our self-confidence and self-esteem and uh, our level of success and let me turn on the demo for you so today is the second webinar before the training uh, healing childhood trauma healing the inner child and uh, today we're gonna talk about where are you did not get enough love and i will tell you about five steps or five uh, stages of uh, a childhood and those uh, stages are prenatal or fetal period. And here we're gonna talk about fear of being judged, fear of uh, what others will think about me. We're gonna talk about feelings of shame, uh, the feeling that nobody understands me or nobody can ever understand me. And we're gonna talk about the sense of superiority um about the mentality that i am smart and cool uh, and others are idiot i'm better than everybody and here we're also going to talk about the content constant stress and anxieties then we're going to talk about the second period is oral period and it's between uh, zero and 18 months uh of our life and here we're going to touch the overweight problems addiction smoking alcohol computer games tv series um, addiction to bite something or chew gum we're gonna talk about love addiction and toxic relationship uh here we're also gonna talk about unrequited love and long distance relationship and then the third period is anal period or party training period and here it's all about our sex life. Uh, this period um, impacted our sexuality in adulthood. Uh, we're gonna talk about money and anger management. And we're gonna talk about the problems with money, uh, with that, uh, shopaholism, sex addiction, OCD, um, and then um, anger management and nervous breakdowns. And finally, the, the stage number four is going to be about the gender identity. Um, this period is uh, from uh, this period is covering three between three to five years old. And here we're going to talk about health, femininity, healthy femininity, masculinity, adult sexuality, acceptance of your body, self esteem, and self confidence. And um, as I said earlier, uh, this is the free webinar before we're going to go for the deep, profound psychological training, healing the inner child. And the training is going to be for eight weeks. Uh, it's going to it will start on October 10th uh, and it will end on November 28th. And before that, we're going to have four uh, free self-development webinars where I'm going to share with you all the theory. And on the training, we're going to do practical exercise. We're going to actually heal our inner child. But before healing, I would like you to understand the theory. Why do we need to heal the inner child? And today's the second webinar. And if you missed the first one, the link is below this video. On the first webinar, I um, spoke about the inner child, who is the inner child, um, why he has a defensive mechanism, how you can see and notice your inner child, which words and actions um, is he using in our daily life. And uh, uh, the training itself is going to be here on YouTube. It's going to be... Um, closed group 
and it's not free it's paid training and at the end i will tell you a little bit more about uh, different ways how you can participate and it's going to be every uh, thursday at 9 a.m uh pacific standard time los angeles time and all sessions will be recorded and emailed to all participants so if you cannot join us online you can watch uh all the videos later and do all the exercises at a time convenient to you okay so um this is the slide from the first webinar that we had last thursday obstacles to love meeting your inner child the link is below and this is the slide for our third webinar which is going to be next uh, thursday and we're going to talk about overeating problems and uh, the inner child what is hidden behind the overeating and i will tell you about eight reasons why people eat more than their body needs and actually what to do with it how i will give you 10 advice how to stop your overeating problem and finally we're going to have a webinar number four it's going to be also free and it's going to be about personal boundaries and self-esteem 10 reasons why it's so difficult to defend your opinion and your interest uh, we're going to talk about feelings of shame and guilt and we're going to talk about why it's so difficult to share your feelings with your friends and loved ones and if you did not sign up yet for those seminars below under this video you can find the link and you can click and enter your email it's like a very short form where you should enter your name your city and your email address and then you will receive an email before the next seminar with a specific link uh, so subscribe in order not to miss it and uh, mm, if you're here if you're watching me please say hi and if you're gonna watch me later in recordings please also you know send your comments below the video let me know where are you from uh, let me know that um, you're watching me and um, you can uh, if you're gonna watch this video uh, later then you can stop the video and write me what do you expect from this webinar uh why this is um why did you came here and why are you interested in this specific topic and then you can you know continue and watch this video uh your comments your answers gives me an idea about who you are and uh, based on your comments and your questions i create new webinars that will help you to be more happier success more su happier more successful and achieve your goals and i do not believe in uh, coincidence and if you're here then you are supposed to be here and it means that you came here for a purpose uh, and i hope that you will find some answers uh, today uh, for questions that you might have for years okay a little bit about me if you don't know me i am elena semenek e-l-e-n-a I am a psychologist and the life coach. I am um, the founder of Psychology of Happiness, where happiness is the purpose of life. This is my company, this is my YouTube channel, and I believe that everybody wants to be happy. And my mission is here to share my knowledge with you so, so I can help you to see um, how you can change your life uh, and how you can become happier and more successful. And I've graduated as a social and political psychologist from Ural State University in Russia. And in 2005, I received a teaching degree in psychology. And within the last 15 years, I've been studying uh, different methods of psychology, including neurolinguistic programming, NLP, the concept of how our brain works, uh, about our behavior patterns, thinking arrows. I've studied family psychology and family constellation the different laws between the family members and how and why we uh, repeat our parents uh, mistakes and i've graduated from initiation institute from male and female maturity which uh, studies relationship within yourself with your partner with your parents 
and I specialize in childhood trauma. I help people to heal their traumas and to create the life that they really, really want. And today uh, we're going to talk about four steps of childhood. And the first step is prenatal or fetal period. And also it uh, first two, three months after birth. Uh, some psychologists, they do not accept the idea that there is a, um, psychology <laughs> Uh, about the fetal um, period and they especially doctors they do not believe that uh, you know the period when baby is inside the mommy is affects somehow um, the adult's life but um, I would like to tell you about this theory and I think personally that um, this does affect our life and if you don't believe in it, then um, consider just first, maybe first or second, the third months of the birth. And if you have children, this is going to help you to understand them better. And if you don't have children, um, you can try to remember stories that you've heard uh, about uh, pregnancy uh, when mom, when your mom was pregnant with you and um, those stories uh, will help you understand your character your belief system and um, why for example why uh, you might be in a constant stress or have so many anxiety anxieties in your life okay so uh, the basic child needs of this period is i am the center of the universe all my needs are fulfilled instantly and everything and everyone in this world is a part of me and work for me and this is normal the child feels that he is a god any abnormalities uh, stress health issues during pregnancy and or right uh, for during the first month uh, after the birth and such as um, when the the fetus did not receive enough food or enough vitamins or maybe birth trauma or any difficulties during the birth the child can form the belief that the world is a dangerous place i cannot trust the world i cannot trust anyone at the deep level the child experiences the feeling of deficiency and the child might control a mechanism which means Mm, the desire to compete to fight with other people to be higher better than everybody else so in order to achieve anything in life this person will fight will compete will be angry will be violent and um, will be selfish and this is gonna happen this is happening because during the birth he had a trauma and he created the belief that this world is a dangerous place. I should not and I cannot trust anyone. Uh, every child goes through this narcissistic period. And this period is necessary for healthy self-esteem. A child should feel himself as a center of the universe. And this is going to help him to create the feelings. Yes, I can. I deserve uh, good things. I am capable. And this will help him to create a good health esteem and self-confidence. But if the child went through trauma during this period, um, then in a worst case scenario, we're going to have a narcissistic, selfish person who cannot trust anyone and who feel superior above all. And trauma during uh, a narcissistic period uh, in adulthood might reflect as um, um, a dependence on other people what other will say about me uh, the desire to become one uh, with another person dependent relationship uh, a person who wants to have a friend who feels uh, thinks uh, and does the same as he or a woman who believes or want to have a husband uh, who will predict her desires, who will um, be a psychic and not understand her mood. Uh, we might have a person who will have constant struggles for resources. 
a person who will use manipulation uh, and lies to get what he wants. Um, we might have a person who has feelings of superiority over others. And um, the person will think that he has to have a better car, better house, better phone, better husband, better friends, better job. And the person will show off in order to show, you know, everybody and uh, himself first that he is better than other. He believes that he is better than other and that's why he has to have the best of the best. We might have a, a person with a narcissistic trauma um, might uh, criticize uh, a lot other people and uh, other people work. And it might happen in real life so the person can actually say those words or he might think it in his head. So it's constant comparison of um, himself with others. And when a narcissist can't get what he want, uh, he either devalue it or he feel his feelings of superiority changes to a feelings of insignificance. The feelings that nobody understands me, I am nothing, uh, the, the desire to hide, and then it's going to change quickly to the feelings that I am better than everybody else. Because a narcissistic person cannot feel shame, he cannot be in feelings that I am worse, I am nothing, he cannot be in those feelings for a long time. So he will change back to the selfish, um, rude, uh, um, manipulative person quickly. And again, he will put himself above everybody else. And the narcissist often lives uh, in anxiety, fears, uh, because he or she has to analyze every situation, every small conversation. And a narcissistic is a person who always think what uh, he should say in return, how he can um, answer in this situation uh, or what he was supposed to answer. So this person lives in constant anxiety and uh, this anxiety becomes kind of normal for him. And during uh, the uh, online training, eight weeks of uh, healing the inner child, uh, the first week uh, we're going to talk about the paradise, return to paradise, return to the feelings of paradise. And we're going to do this because the uh, narcissistic period is extremely important. And everybody went through this period. And everybody um, time to time wants to be superior, right? Everybody uh, feels that people cannot understand him. And narcissistic trauma can be deep or can be shallow. But uh, we're going to work on this trauma. And we're going to do uh, an exercise that called the divine child and it's going to help us to learn and connect with the, uh, our inner child we're going to learn how to hear our true desires then we're going to do an exercise that's, that that uh, is called a magical lake and the symbol of a lake uh, the round lake is a symbol of a mother womb and um, we will return to the feelings of paradise. We're going to fulfill our inner child with love. We're going to give him sense of security, freedom and happiness. So he is not going to struggle anymore. He's not going to suffer anymore. And uh, he is not going to make us um, fight with other people, fight with the world. And then we're going to do an exercise uh, turtle. Uh, in order to learn how to relax, how to relieve the anxiety, relieve our stress, and how to feel protected by a strong turtle shell and find the secure place within. The next slide is about rage, narcissistic rage. A narcissistic rage is the uncontrollable and unexpected anger. Rage comes in many forms, but all uh, pertain to the same thing, revenge. 
Because narcissistic person thinks that the world and other people is attacking him, he wants to revenge. Uh, narcissistic rage are based on the fear that he is under attack. And this is the fear of death. And narcissistic rage is so sudden, so quick and so big that uh, he, uh, it will endure even after the threat is gone. Uh, the root uh, of narcissistic rage is uh, hidden in, of course, in the childhood when uh, an infant needed uh, something and his needs were not satisfied. He did not get enough food, did not get enough sleep. Uh, then um, for the infant, it's like death. So I don't have enough food, I'm gonna die. I don't, uh, I did not sleep enough, I'm gonna die. Any infant um, have, does not understand that the world is a separate part. He uh, sees it as a part of him. So for him as like uh, one part of me is attacking another part of me. And the fear of death is so big and is so deep that it leads to uncontrollable rage. And an infant has no sense of boundaries. Everything external is a continuation of me. My mother is a continuation of me. When a mother cannot satisfy fetus or infant's desires, for him it's like, again, one part of him is attacking another part of him. And this rage can be provoked by small things. Uh, a person uh, begins to yell or break things or physically he might beat another person or abuse an animal. And for example, children might be violent at school. They might bite other kids. They might leave bruises. And um, uh, during another time, they might be sweet, polite and good manner and have a good manners. And it's very hard to believe how this child could be so violent. And um, often uh, a person might control himself in public, but at home he becomes a monster. And I would like to recommend you to watch um, the first uh, season of Big Little Lies. Uh, this is a uh, seven ep uh, episodes uh, series. And pay attention to Nicole Kidman husband. He his rage is always sudden, always based on small things that normal person might not even notice. And um, you can also see how this algorithm, how this pattern reflects the whole family. Uh, another example, uh, when a person controls him almost in every situation, but when he drinks alcohol, he becomes violent. Uh, he might have a desire to rape or abuse another person. Um, he starts fight without the reason and the, the, uh, the scary part is that he cannot be stopped, nobody can stop him and he cannot stop himself until he releases his rage. Again, uh, the movie Big Little Lies, uh, there are only seven episodes, but you can see this algorithm. And if this is somehow related to you, if you are in an abusive relationship or maybe you know someone who is in an abusive relationship, this movie is going to be... A deal breaker. You, you, after watching this movie, you might uh, understand that uh, your relationship is not just um, is not just you, you. You might realize that it's not just a problem, not just a regular problem, but this is a serious problem, and you have to do something about it. Uh, another example of a narcissistic rage is angry driver. Um, I'm talking about drivers who can scream, who can create a fight, who can race another person if somebody uh, cut him off. And this is also a fear of death. So beneath it's the fear of death. The fear is uh, so sudden, so deep and unnoticeable. So the driver becomes angry with milliseconds. 
and he can uh, jump out of his car, he can break window, he can hit another person, another driver, and he can become violent like in, in milliseconds. And the deepest child's fear is the fear of death. And this is the fear of being swallowed, being crushed, being strung, strangled, and being rejected by the mother. Those fears formed during the fetal period inside the mother womb. The fetus is afraid that mother is going to swallow him, crush him, reject him. And especially this fear uh, is um, formed during the birth process because he actually, mother has to push him in order for child to be born. And during the birth process, uh, every one of us experienced that fear unless you were like C-section, right? And um, in psychology, you know, there is a big argument about the C-section. Some people believe that uh, this is uh, very good, specifically from the medical point of view. And a lot of psychologists believe uh, that this will create a deep trauma later in adult's life. Uh, anyway, today we're gonna we're not gonna talk about that part. I just want to tell you that during the birth we all experienced a fear of death, and uh, from one side uh, this is the fear of death, and from another side this is the desire to survive, to live, and. It is not possible for uh, a child, for an infant, for a baby to escape death. Since uh, everything external is continuation of me, this is how the baby thinks, I cannot escape from myself. The death is also part of me. And um, an infant wants to dissolve, want to feel nothing, and as a result, an infant might block his feelings and emotions. So if the child experienced a deep um, birth trauma, then he will become a narcissistic person who is going to block his feelings, his emotions, and he is not going to be able to feel sympathy. He will not be able to um, give love uh, and receive love because he is not capable of it. He blocked his feelings. He blocked his emotions during his birth and the first few months of his life. And narcissistic people are people who know about feelings and emotions in theory, but they cannot feel it in reality. Uh, for example, if you never tried lemon, you might know that it's sour, but you cannot imagine the taste until you eat it before. So uh, you might know that it's sour and the people make like a weird faces when they eat lemon and you can kind of even um, show this emotion on your face but you you cannot uh, sympathize you cannot truly understand what it means to eat lemon this is the same with a narcissistic person on the second week of our training um, eight weeks of healing the inner child we're gonna talk about uh, birth as a miracle of life and i will offer you an amazing technique the meditation that's called uh, three wishes by the goldfish and the three wishes are uh, to be protected by the divine energy to be loved and to be happy then we're gonna do an exercise my divine parents and you will have an opportunity, uh, you will go through feelings when your life is valued and when your life is important. And you're going to experience the divine parents love, uh, who are happy, who feel joy because you were born. And you will receive the divine blessing um, to have a happy, successful life. And then we're going to do an exercise uh, the divine egg and uh, you will go through the reborn process uh, you can let yourself to reborn and to see the world as a great place to live um, let it be an abundance place where there's always someone who is gonna protect you 
And um, today I would like to talk to you about uh, Sigmund Freud. And a lot of people call him Uncle Freud, and in Russia we call him Grandpa Freud. Uh, I don't know why, but um, American people call him Uncle Freud, Russian people call him Grandpa Freud. And if you ask, um, if I ask you or any group to name the most famous psychologist, the majority will say his name. And Sigmund uh, Freud was born on May 6, 1856 uh, in a Jewish family. And he spent most of his life in Vienna, uh, Austria. And uh, then he escaped to London and died in London on September 23rd, 1939. It was the beginning of uh, World War II. And Nazis began to occupy the area where he lived. And he was a celebrity uh, in his time. People recognized him on the street. And he had uh, huge ambitions. He was often dishonest, extremely brutal to his friends and terrible to his enemies. But he was uh, a genius. And he was the founder, the father of psychoanalysis, uh, which is one of the biggest branches of psychology. Freud was the first who said that our unconscious motives control our behavior. Uh, not us, not our brain, not our mind. Our unconscious mind controls our behavior. And psychoanalysis is a method of uh, treating people through dialogue between um, a patient and a therapist. And he was the father, the founder of this method. And he was uh, um, extremely brutal and he was a genius. And at the same time, people hate him for his views and his theory. He is known not for one theory, but for several theories that he brought to the world of psychology. And some theories are terrific and some uh, received many criticism. And one of the most criticized theory is the theory of uh, penis envy. And according to Freud, all female went through um, the desire to have a penis during childhood. The idea was that a little girl thought that once she had, once she had a penis and someone took it from her. And this uh, is uh, uh, the psychological trauma that every woman uh, got in her childhood. And the girl loves uh, her father because uh, he has a penis and she rejects her mother because she does not have a penis. This is how um, enemies would describe uh, Freud theory. And this explanation, of course, is not going to make you respect him or have a good opinion of him. Another highly criticized theory is his uh, dreams interpretation theory. Uh, in his uh, theory he um, he offers to look at your dreams as uh, symbols uh, are either penis or vagina and um, basically the interpretation is based on two on those two symbols and yet uh, people still uh, say that he's the father of psychology because he was uh, the first who was talking about the existence of the unconscious. Unconscious motivation, unconscious desire, and unconscious conflicts. To make it simple, it's not you who are making the decisions, it's your unconscious mind who does everything for you. And you have no idea of what or why do you think or make specific decisions in your life. Uh, let's say you fall in love uh, with a man and you're ready to get married. And if someone uh, is asking you why, a woman can say uh, something like, uh, I love him, mm, I like him, I'm ready to move uh, to the next chapter of my life. Uh, he's smart, he's attractive, uh, he has potential, I want to have kids with him, I can see myself with him for the rest of my life. 
And the Freud would say that even if this woman uh, was honest and she is not lying, but still she has desires and motivations uh, inside her um, unconscious mind that guide her and that make her go through um, this experience and she is not even aware of it. And those uh, hidden true desires might be because this guy reminds her her father or maybe he wants to get she wants to get back uh, back on uh, somebody who betrayed her or she feels fear of loneliness and it's so huge and uh, marriage kids and family mm, is a symbol for her or is the situation that's gonna prevent her from this um, loneliness in the future so those fears feelings and motivations are hidden uh, from her in her unconscious mind and um, the main idea the main Freud's idea was that people don't know their true desires they don't know why they do this uh, or another thing and as if you can see on this uh, slide on the image the white part is what we understand is what we know it's like uh, he is handsome he is nice i think he's a great man we have same common values and below the big huge part of you uh, this is the actual um, reasons why you're making this decision and the examples can be mm, mm, the following have you ever liked somebody without understanding why for example you uh, you've met someone and you don't know this person yet but you like him already or uh, maybe you uh, remember you can remember a situation where you did something or you argued with somebody or you said something and then when you're thinking about this situation you don't really know why did you do this you know why you became so angry or maybe you had dreams and you cannot explain why you had those dreams who uh, are those people from your dreams and why uh, in your dream you did this or that and Freud explains it he is saying that our true desires our true fears and our true motivations are hidden from us and we are not aware of them and yet they control our lives and all of this would be nice and would be fine if uh, our unconscious mind would be smart and would be looking for our best interest but according to freud it's not uh, how it works according to freud there are three uh, elements three processes uh, that are going in your uh, head and create internal conflicts and uh, mm, you can ask a question so who you are what um, mm, how can you treat yourself how can you understand yourself if anything is hidden in our unconscious mind and let's talk about those three elements and uh, the elements are id which is hidden in our unconscious then uh, we have ego and we have super ego and if you look at this image uh, this white line this is the line between conscious and unconscious and we also have uh, the layer which is pre-conscious so basically conscious is what we know what we understand unconscious and is uh, what we don't know completely uh, don't understand and uh, mm, this is these things are hidden from our awareness and we have the layer in between and uh, those things that we can understand they just um, beneath the surface of awareness so when you come for therapy or when you come for self-development workshop we usually work on this level and um, the id the biggest part of the iceberg 
is present at birth. It is our animal part. It wants to eat, drink, poop, get warm and have sexual satisfaction. And it works on what Freud called the pleasure principles. It wants pleasure and wants it now. And according to Freud, a human is born as a pure id, the pure desire for pleasure. In reality, you can't always get what you want, right? We have, we have a song like, you can't always get what you want. And as a result, we um, either planning how to satisfy our desire or we are uh, thinking how to suppress them, how to ignore them. And the system that helps us to suppress our desire or to satisfy our desire is called ego or self. And ego uh, has a border with it, so it does connect with it. It has like a connection between uh, the conscious and sub-unconscious mind. And ego, uh, we, uh, there are biggest part of, not biggest, like let's say, uh, there are a big part of ego that we can understand. We know, we are aware of it. And there is some part that is hidden from us, but it's very close to our awareness level. And when we have like, oh, I got an insight. This usually insight comes from this lower part of ego. And ego works on reality principles. So it works on the principle of pleasure. And ego is all about the reality. And ego goal is either find the way how to satisfy the desires that we have in it, the hidden desires, or how to give up on them. And ego is part of our consciousness. This is what we think. This is what we, our logic. And the ego is the part that makes decisions. And basically, ego decides what, when, and how. And yet, it is controlled by the id. This is the algorithm. Ego decides what to do, and the, uh, the true desire, the true motivation is hidden beneath it by id. Um, and it's not ends here. Freud introduces us uh, the third component, which is superego. And on the picture is this part on the right side. And the super ego is connected with ego and with id. And super ego is uh, uh, simultaneously located on three levels. levels. Conscious level, pre-conscious level, and unconscious level. Uh, so angel or little devil. Uh, it is like a mm, little devil and super ego is like a little mm, angel who sits uh, on our shoulder. And super ego is our internal rules uh, which were given to us by our parents. So uh, by the society and it's basically what is wrong, what is right, the understanding what I should do, what I should not do, how should I behave and how I should not behave. Uh, and the child is growing uh, up and wants to satisfy his desire, but desires, but sometimes he gets punished for them. Mm. His desires might be inappropriate or his actions might be wrong. For example, a child wants to poop, uh, but he cannot do it. He has to wait. He, you cannot poop in your pants. Like, or a child wants an ice cream and he sees a girl uh, with an ice cream. He wants to take it from her. But super ego, which at that time is a parent, say, no, you should not behave this way. You know, you should wait. You cannot take stuff from other people. And then within time, this... Um, super ego component uh, becomes internalized and uh, now we hear our parents voices our teachers voices our society voices inside of us and super ego is another part of our consciousness something that we can realize something we can control we are aware of this super ego of these um, norms and rules that we have and super ego is like a little agent. It's like a teacher in school who is telling you what you should do and what you should not do. 
super e uh, and ego basically when you have it on one shoulder and super ego on the other shoulder your ego is in between and ego does not know what to do either to satisfy your desires or to follow the super ego rules uh, so ego has a very hard and difficult job and the it says i want to eat have fun and have sexual pleasure and super eager is saying uh, you should be ashamed of yourself this is disgusting stop doing it and ego is like oops what should i do and according to freud we don't even realize those process uh, and we cannot control it according to freud those process are hidden from us and it works like a uh, our external internal organs like kidney heart or stomach we know about them but we cannot really control them and it is something that we have at our birth and ego and super ego we develop in childhood the next um, biggest thing that freud brought to the world of psychology is his psychosexual theory of human development so the first part was about our hidden desires and the second part is about how our ego was developed how our super ego was developed about the conflicts between the ego and super ego and about four stages that every child every one of us went through and how those stages affected our adulthood and he uses the term psychosexual stages he believed the child's life is built around uh, the concept of tension and pleasure and he called pleasure as a libido energy too much tension uh, too much uh, control and we have a fixation fixation is his word which means too much tension basically and this fixation has a lasting effect in our childhood each stage uh, has some specific conflict that the child should resolve and Freud believed that the first five years of our life is crucial to form our adult personality and uh, those five uh, st uh, there are five stages which he um, offered to the world of psychology and you can remember them by a phrase uh, old age parrots live grapes old stands for oral stage uh, age stage for anal stage when the person um, is going through the potty training parents stands for phallic stage uh, love stands for uh, latent period or latent stage and grapes stands for genital stage and um, later freud's follows expanded this theory and i will share with you uh expanded version and also add my explanation uh and we'll try to find the simple words to describe uh this complicated psychological theory when people come to the therapist they want to understand themselves and in order to understand ourselves we have to go back to our childhood and the first stage that freud was talking about is the oral stage he um, did not talk about the uh, uh prenatal period his theory starts from the oral stage and oral stage or oral fixation or oral type of personality is formed at the age uh, from zero to 18 months uh, basically the first year year and a half of, of baby's life and the focus of libido uh, the part of the body where a baby receives the biggest pleasure is mouth the baby receives pleasure by sucking milk or by chewing objects taking out from the mother's breast too early can lead to a serious problems later a person might have problems with the weight uh, all type of eating disorder forms here uh, alcoholism, smoking, uh, biking, biting pencils, mm, oral people with oral type of personality are trying to achieve satisfaction through their mouth. 
And because uh, the child is completely dependent on his mother or his caretaker, this is the period when the baby develops a sense of trust and comfort. And the first uh, emotional contact is a reciprocal smile uh, when, which happens between first and second month of baby's life. Anxiety uh, of losing mother develops at seven months. So uh, the baby um, at the earliest stage before, like on, on the first or second month, he um, can treat uh, basically any adult as his mother. But uh, when he is about six to seven months old, he can um, identify his mother and he can uh, experience stress and fear and anxiety if mother is leaving him for a long period of time. And long period of time is like a day, two days a week or more than a week, right? Um, a fear of strangers is formed at about, at, at about eight months old. And the, the child becomes extremely sensitive to develop any type of anxiety or fears or stress at seven to nine months, months old. So it's very important for mommy to be with her baby during the first nine months of his life. And at this age, we form um, the following beliefs. The, the world is a safe place or the world is a dangerous place, is not a safe place. And I cannot trust this world. My life is not safe. The second belief is that uh, the world is uh, an abundant place. Uh, I have, I can get anything I want. The world has unlimited resources or the world has limited resources and I have to fight for those resources. It's not enough for everyone. And the third belief is I cannot trust people or I can trust people. Basically, if my mom is always here for me, if she satisfied, satisfies my desires, then I can trust other people. If uh, the child uh, was uh, separated from his mother, then most likely he will develop a belief that I cannot trust other people and he will have a trust issues later uh, when he will try to create a relationship, love and romantic relationship in his life. Uh, mother supposed to hold her baby while breastfeed or bottle feeding. This is also how baby develops his first fundamental ability to connect with other people through connection with his mother. And as a result, again, if uh, mother did not hold the baby, if he did not feel her body, then uh, when the baby grows up, he might develop a trust issues and he might struggle with creating a friendship and uh, um, loving, caring, romantic relationship. This type of baby is gonna grow up into adult who will have difficulties of creating emotional deep contact with other people he might become a victim of toxic relationship he might end up in a relationship with a narcissistic person and he might uh, um, feel himself as a victim and be aggressive towards other people uh, the fixation on this stage, basically when uh, the baby did not receive enough milk, when uh, the baby had a problem with sucking a mother nipple, or when mother did not generate enough milk, or maybe the uh, maybe mother did generate enough milk, but baby had the problem with the sucking it, or maybe if he didn't have enough milk and he had to be aggressive and suck harder, uh, or maybe the mother was not holding the baby, all of those things will create an oral fixation. And oral fixation is a term which will lead to oral type of personality. People, oral uh, fixation means that uh, a child had too much tension, too much stress, too much anxiety at this uh, period in his life. And uh, let's talk a little bit about the oral type of personality. And we can uh, divide uh, people into groups, people with this type of personality, 
and um, it can be passive depends, de dependency or aggression personality. Uh, passive dependency is smoking or any type of oral fixation, oral addiction, alcohol, uh, gum, biting nails, uh, biting uh, any pencils, like any type of fixation uh, which we have around the mouth. Eating disorder, overeating or not eating enough. And we will talk about uh, eating uh, disorders and eating mechanism uh, on next uh, Thursday, next webinar, which is called Overeating and the Inner Child. This is all about the oral type of personality. Uh, if you cannot control uh, the amount of food that you eat, if you... Um, uh, go into the fridge refrigerator and cannot stop yourself then uh, Please come to the next webinar. I will tell you about eight reasons why people do this We're gonna talk about this specific fixation in details um, passive dependency also can um, Can be uh, We can see it as a love addiction people who end up in toxic relationship the victim behavior dependent uh, uh, relationship where the person uh, depend on other person relationship with a narcissist and long distance relationship unrequited love also is here and the second type of uh, oral personality is aggressive uh, behavior aggressive dependency and uh, uh, is when a when a child was sucking uh, mommy's nipple and did not get enough milk or the milk was not fat enough was did not have enough ingredients enough minerals or vitamins right so a baby became angry and aggressive and the child develops the belief system that in order for me to get what i want in order for me to survive basically not just to get what i want i want milk i need milk in order to survive so in order, in order for me to survive, I must be aggressive. I must be aggressive to achieve my goals. I must be aggressive to get from one destination to B, uh, from destination A to B. Examples, a person who creates fights out of anything. A person who likes to eat meat on a bone, like chicken wings with a bone, chips, any type of hard food, um, nuts chewing gums it's it's like aggressive type of behavior of uh, movement aggressive movement like meat from the bone um a person who likes aggressive sport like mma boxing wrestling because the oral type of personality is uh, based on the contact between mother and the child and if the if mother was not holding the child uh, as a result, we have a person who wants to have in close contact, aggressive close contact. And this is your martial arts, right? MMA, boxing, wrestling, close aggressive contact, aggressive type of personality. Um, a, another example, a person who bites his nails or bites pencils. A person who uh, has desires of uh, fighting of argument and person who likes to argument a person who uses sarcasm a lot uh, uh, offensive jokes it's like biting with your words with your mouth biting sarcasm and a person who likes to use others to meet his own needs and uh, again uh, on the online training the third week we're gonna talk about parents love as a foundation for a happy life and again uh, we're gonna talk we're gonna do the meditation right the child wants to be protected to be loved and to be happy we're gonna talk about the divine parents uh, and exercise the divine parents uh, and how important is it to feel that your life and you are important for your parents and we're gonna do an exercise where you can actually feel that and you can experience that feeling and it's gonna be the foundation for your inner child the foundation for healing your uh, childhood trauma 
and we're gonna do the exercise uh, the divine egg and you will be able to reborn to go and experience these feelings of new life and you're gonna reborn into the world uh, which is an abundant loving place so the anal stage or anal type of personality uh, we go through this stage when we are we went through the stage when we were like between year and a half and three years old and the focus of libido and again this is the part of the body where child receives the biggest pleasure pleasure is anus and um, the child must learn how to control his bodily needs the ability to control his body and this stage is where uh, the child uh, develops a sense of control a sense of accomplishment and independence if uh, the child went uh, through the stage successfully then he grows up into a com competent adult a person with good self-esteem uh, a person who can control himself a person who can control his life a person who can control money a person who can create gold uh, goals and a person who is successful financially and people who had uh, fixation on this stage uh, and fixation is formed when parents were too controlling uh, when parents did not reward the child for learning how to use a potty those people develop anal type of personality and children who had problems with the constipation or diarrhea might develop two types of personality it can be an obsessive controlling behavior or a person with a messy type of personality person who cannot be in charge of anything so there are two opposite type of personality and obsessive controlling behavior uh, is the fixation on holding feces when the person had too much stress a child had too much stress too much fixation too much tension on holding his feces when the child was uh, trying so hard uh, to to hold his feces in order not to poop to his pants and uh, as an adult we might see a person who wants uh, to control everything everything should be on its place uh, on its order um, a person with OCD personality disorder a person who has a spotless house a woman who has a spotless kitchen everything is organized in at her kitchen in her kitchen uh, a person with a spotless office uh, a woman with a spot or a man with a perfect closet where clothing uh, is sorted by type and color mm. a person who likes to be in control who never late uh, and he might actually get angry if he is late he will feel shame and he is not okay when other people are late he's gonna judge other people for being late uh, here we're gonna have a person who spends money only on necessary things uh, who likes to save money um, and he might even have a hard time of spending money on himself he will not buy expensive stuff because it's waste of money unless it's uh, ex absolutely necessary and here we're also gonna have a good girl syndrome or good boy syndrome uh, it's desire to be perfect desire to be good desire to be the best in everything and the person who is gonna intellectualize and rationalize uh, his uh, decisions his life and this person is um, not gonna be any these people are, are not usually creative people because they have to block the creativity creativity is when you let things go the way they are you open and you have no expectations then you create new things like an artist or musician or a dancer and those people they are always in control they cannot uh, just relax and let things go and another uh, type uh, of anal personality is um, an opposite a, a messy person a person who cannot be in charge or who hate to be in charge 
and also the fixation uh, uh, fixation means tension right fixation was on uh, this party training stage when the person um, was uh, uh, fixated on letting go on of his feces um, and as an adult we see a person who cannot save money a shopaholic a people who always in debt or people who can barely survive between salaries uh, we might have a person who struggles uh, with planning his life, planning in advance his family vacations, holidays, parties, a person who cannot uh, organize things, uh, a person who cannot keep his word, uh, who will change his opinion often, uh, a person with a super messy closet, uh, who has a messy car, a complete mess in his car, and um, a women, w women who have... Uh, mass in their purses and um, this uh, fixation it can be deep or it can be shallow so uh, maybe you are a well organized person at work but when you come home your home is a mess so it means that you had fixation on this stage but it did not affect it all your life but because you had a fixation on this stage at home you are a total mess and again, during the uh, healing, uh, the inner child workshop, we're going to work on uh, transformation of those feelings. Of trans uh, We're going to transform the fixation. We're going to heal uh, this fixation and it's going to be an exercise told in a swamp. And we're going to release your hidden aggression because fixation is always about aggression i will talk about it a little bit later and we're gonna learn how to release your aggression and how to overcome all those shoulda woulda coulda i have to i must to uh and allow yourself to desire what you want accept uh, allow yourself to accept your body and to love yourself to love your body uh, and we're going to do an exercise which is called I can and we're going to talk ab about the ability to be the boss of your own life and to live by your own rules and make uh, be responsible for the decisions that you make and anal aggression aggression can be formed when a toddler has too much tension too much stress during party training when he cannot hold um, his feces or he cannot release his feces he becomes angry and the fixation of uh, on this stage can lead to uh, masochism and uh, the masochism is the mechanism of uh, enduring a pain or sadism and sadism is an uncontrolled desire to cause pain to other person or an animal and here again uh, a person can develop two types of fixation it can be squandering or savings and the person often feel angry with himself for that for uh, being too controlling or uh, for being squandered and behind this aggression uh, is the aggression on parents for example a child gets angry when uh, a parent says something like this until you poop you're not gonna play until you poop you're not gonna watch tv no devices until you finish pooping or uh, if the child pooping his pants a, a parent might say uh, something like shame on you you are a big boy why can't you learn how to use potty and the mother or father is shaming um uh, his child and the child feels angry but he cannot feel angry towards his parent so he feels angry towards himself so this is uh, inner aggression and uh, because he cannot feel angry towards his parent another way he's gonna be angry towards other people again a child might be mm, quiet at home but when he goes to school he might become violent because this anger that he 
feels inside, he cannot release it to parents, he's gonna release it to other people. Mm. And as a result, we might have an anger person or a person who is uh, always looking for permission, for advice. Uh, for example, a woman who constantly calls calls her husband, or her parent, her girlfriend, and she has to discuss every decision that she is making. Uh, in reality, this type of uh, woman or this type of person is looking for a permission. She is afraid to make her own decision. So she is looking for parental permission for a parent who, parent who is going to support her. And um, she did not have it in her childhood. So she is gonna, going to replay this, um, um, this scenario in her adult life. Uh, a person develops self-criticism and negative self-talk, inner aggression. If the child was not able to release this aggression on other kids or on other people, he's gonna be angry and it's gonna be inner aggression, hidden inner aggression, self-criticism and negative talk. And fixation on this stage can also lead to sexual problems. Uh, because sex involves different smells, fluids, sounds, in order to experience an orgasm, you have to relax, you have to let go of your guards, you have to allow all those smells, fluids and sounds to be part of your sex life. And the person, he either cannot allow it, he is in control, he cannot relax, or the person or, uh, is afraid. Uh, if it's a woman, she might be afraid or, or that the person will think something bad about her or she's going to be judged and she will be tense. And if she is tense, uh, then she cannot have orgasm. And I would like to uh, invite you again to the eight weeks of online training uh, where we're gonna work with the aggression and we're gonna do an exercise that's called four ways to respond to rudeness. And I will share with you four options, four ways how you can talk to rude people. And I will explain uh, which way is working in which situation. And I will share with you specific phrases that you can use if somebody is uh, um, talking in a rude way to you or somebody is crossing your boundaries. And we're also going to talk about uh, inner fears, hidden inner fears and hidden anxieties. And we're going to do an exercise that's called meeting your inner monster and you will have an opportunity uh, to meet your inner monster in order to feed him, in order to calm him down. So you're not gonna feel so anxious, so stressful in your real life. Then we're gonna do the meditation, which is called the source of my strength. And I will show you, I will teach you how to open your internal uh, channel, internal source of your strength and abundance. And we're gonna do an amazing um, exercise, uh, uh, which called overcoming the fear of great spider. And uh, a spider is a symbol of um, kids, uh, of children's fear, of children's anxiety. And we're gonna do an exercise that will help you to overcome this fear and leave all your fears in your past. And I would like to invite you to the online training. And if, if you click on the link below this video, you can see um, um, the program of the training. You can see the topics. And I always I offer four ways to participate. And we're gonna meet once a week online. We're gonna do exercise and we're gonna work with within two months so you can actually heal and connect with your inner child and they offer discounts and if you register today or within the next two days you will receive 15 percent discount you can also uh, invite your friends and both of you will get 25 percent off and if you share uh, this video or uh, the link to this training on your social media you will get five percent for each link that you share okay i am gonna be happy to see you uh, next uh, tuesday 
it oh, my alarm is ringing next tuesday at 8 a.m los angeles time pacific time and uh, we will talk we will continue this uh, webinar and i will be answering your questions at the end of the webinar so please join me it's going to be next uh, tuesday at 9 a.m and next thursday again at 9 a.m we're going to talk about uh, eating problem overeating problem extra weight and the inner child again my name is uh, elena semenek and this is psychology of happiness where happiness is the purpose of life if you want to change your life if you want to be happier uh, more successful uh, have more joy and create love and healthy relationship you are in the right place i welcome you to my new i welcome you to my channel and i will be happy to see you on my next webinars okay bye bye see you next time